Good day. So in this video, we're going to look at how to remove a uh, the Onan generator out of a uh, 2004 Road Trek Popular 190. So this has a 2.8 kilowatt KV generator underneath of it. We'll take a look at that before we uh, go inside of the van. So you can see the generator hiding there. You could pop the door open here and check the oil if you wanted to. On the uh, KV series, you unthread the uh, oil dipstick and then place it back in. That's how you check to see if it's full. It doesn't need to be threaded in. There's another variant of this motor where you do need to thread it in. So they weren't consistent with the company, unfortunately. You could drain the oil in this position if you squeezed in there then you would just probably use an oil pump to pump the oil back in and in most cases you'd use a 15W40 oil in this unless you're uh, using it in the winter and you use a bit of a thinner oil it's all documented in the manual so the first thing you do is uh, before you get dirty is make space so you can access the electrical equipment in here where you start crawling around on the ground. So you're going to want to get a, a multimeter. And so you turn this on, put it to AC, test it in a receptacle somewhere, make sure it's working. You can see the camper's not plugged in, but it does have an inverter, so it's important just to be careful so you don't uh, shock yourself, as they say. So I'm going to get this stuff set up, then we're going to go in the van and I'll start filming it again. All right, so before we go in the van, I'll just show you. So I got it set to AC 120 volts, just checking your receptacle. So you do this, you don't turn off your multimeter before you do your testing inside, because you know it works right now. So you leave it set up like that. So we'll go inside and uh, open up the transfer switch and take a look in there. All right, so this is the electrical compartment in the 2004. You got your uh, AC and DC panels and your charger here. There's a 30 amp AC transfer switch. So it has uh, the shore power coming in here. This looks like it's the outlet going into the AC panel here. So that is going to be coming from the generator. So we gotta take a look in here, check for power. Then I followed the generator cable underneath and it goes underneath the AC panel. So we're going to have to uh, move the AC panel. They use the Phillips. How unCanadian of them. Should be Robertson all the way. Ha! Let's see if we can find another one. This is hinged on the bottom. So you can see there's some uh, a relay there to flip back and forth. I to find a place to put the camera. Get in the way. Probably just be in the way. So I'm just going to check for power here. Just bear with me. So right now I'm checking the bottom contact that appears to be tied into the shore power. There's uh, no voltage. Checking the top here. No voltage. One more contact here. There's a pair on the side. Again, 
low voltage so you know it's safe to work in here. So the next step will be that we're gonna just move the uh, panel. Back to Robertson. I got the battery hooked up still. So the DC section, which is here, it's gonna be live. Let's just cover that up again, turn that sideways. Hopefully I can move this backwards a bit. Put the panel out four inches, I guess. Maybe not. So you can see in the back here, the generator cable comes through the floor. I wish I had some light, but it's just full of caulking here. Comes in here. And uh, they transition to a different wire for some reason and they've got morettes on it that they've taped. So we'll figure that out uh, in a minute. All right, so this is what you'll find underneath the morettes. I believe this is tin plated wire. It's hard to tell. It's not very bright in here, but it's SIS wire. So it's meant for like instrument boards and it's uh, got a lot of braids in it compared to the uh, copper on the lug. So this the lugs probably weren't rated for the SIS wire, so that's why they did a cable joint in here. So you got the uh, the hot here, and then uh, in back there, you'll see the ground uh, bar. So you get the wire off the ground bar. So it's got flathead screws. It's got Robertson screws, Phillips head screws. It's kind of disappointing. I think this transfer switch is made in the states. That's why it's got these stupid fasteners on it. So uh, we'll get this off and out and then uh, we'll go underneath the camper at that point. We'll be done working on the inside. All right, so we got the uh, camper safely up off the ground. It's got the wheel chalk, the parking brake is on, vehicles in park. These are 2 by 12 ramps. They're actually quite heavy, so they're kind of hard to move. I think it was a 12 footer I used on either side. Now you can see I cut it up so that there's about a, an 8 inch stagger and a big enough landing to get a pretty big tire up on top of it. There's the exhaust for the generator. Here's uh, where the fuel tank is being relocated to. The uh, For the fuel filler rather. The fuel filler is supposed to be like, right around here. So if you're ever having trouble putting gas in your road truck it's probably because the back end of your van is too low. Obviously you're not going to lift it up this high, but when you uh, pick a place to fill up, try to have your nose pointing down and you'll have a lot better success putting fuel into it. So this is uh, the generator cover here. Get some uh, specs off of there. Another sticker with the serial number there to open it. Air filter is right here. It's pretty accessible. I had it out earlier. Just, yeah, pop it open and there's an oval air filter. So part of what I'm trying to do here is I need to take this generator down and move it backward as close as I can get to the uh, propane tank with uh, still being able to service the air filter because I'm putting a sway bar on the rear axle and currently there's like no space between them. Hopefully you can see something in the picture here. Something to look at I found was that these rubber things here are completely worn out on this uh, generator. It's got about 200 hours on it. 
I've never actually used it. That's the uh, oil drain plug there. Filler is here. I like the way the road checks are done now where they just have a big battery bank underneath of them instead of having to take care of the generator which is kind of noisy. They just have a second alternator on them. So that works out pretty good. There's a uh, start switch here. I have the battery hooked up to this unit still so we're not going to touch that. I should slide the battery out and deal with it. So there's a uh, fuel filters right there. On eBay you can get a complete carburetor for like $30 for these things. I don't really understand how that's possible. I've been thinking about buying one. Otherwise I think this one needs to be gone through and cleaned as it uh, stutters a little bit. I think that's how you change a spark plug is through here. You can see in there or not. So anyway, we're going to take this thing down and to do that We've got a, a bolt here. There's a shroud to protect the propane tank. We'll have to it's on there pretty hokey. Get that off. I can't see through the lens very well, sorry. Alright, so there's another bolt there. There's the same on the either side. Other side. Let's go take a measurement and see how tall this generator is. So the generator weighs 110 pounds plus the frame and the exhaust and everything. So it's about 12 inches tall, and I've got about 18 inches of height, or so 15, to work with. So I'm going to use some kind of a, a jack to bring this down. There's no way you could take it down as a, a person by yourself. Even with two people, it wouldn't be that easy. So it looks like we've got to get the shroud off. It also protects the... Uh, propane line that goes up into the coach. You can see it starts here. There's two regulators up in here. I know I need to change one because it's the wrong pressure. And then uh, I think I got to replace them both. There's a barbecue regulator and then there's uh, one for the coach. And there are uh, stove tops not working very well so I think that has to come out and get replaced. Okay. Another video to do that. So I'll get uh, set up here and start to pull this generator down. We'll get uh, some more video as that happens. Alright, so I got the exhaust off. That was pretty easy to do. There's two carriage bolts right here. Sorry for the light. And uh, it's a half inch. One of the carriage bolts broke off. It's probably for the best. It's easier than fighting it. So I'll have to replace them. And then there's a muffler clamp holding this onto the bottom of the generator. These were pretty easy to loosen off and just turn it back and forth a few times. There's actually a serviceable part in the exhaust, which is really a crazy spot. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a little fastener up above my finger. So inside of there is a spark arrester. I'm supposed to take that screw out and drop the spark arrestor out, which you can kind of just see is in there, and clean it off and stick it back in. I don't know if that's a quarter inch uh, screw to take that out or what. I'm kind of hesitant to do it because I got a feeling it's going to break. I won't be able to do it once the generator is off unless I got it hanging off the side of a table or something. I got to figure out how I'm going to do that because we're this close, we might as well. So you can see how much this thing jiggles around. I'm going to talk to a, an Onan dealer and see if that's normal or not. And uh, look at replacing those. Alright, so we're going to disconnect the battery. This unit here has uh, a single 12 volt battery in the back. Some of them have two 6 volt batteries in there. Some of them have two 12 volt batteries back and forth. A few different ways that they did it. So this uh, just has a half inch bolt holding on. I think some of them had a wing nut originally. You should take this out every year and put some never sees on it. As well as just generally take a look at your battery. There's like a grasp that you can pull down, lift it out. Got some uh, Velcro.
These are just like regular uh, slides for some kind of furniture. And uh, you might destroy them doing this, but uh, that's part of pulling the battery out. I had the battery out earlier this year, so I know that most of the ball bearings fell out. You see, there's not much uh, height clearance here. You wouldn't be able to put a golf cart 2 battery in here, sadly. Probably shouldn't have my leg underneath that in case the thing falls out. You'll find a shunt for the uh, battery meter inside of the uh, unit. Some wires. I gotta redo this. The wiring that they used is, is adequate, but it's been damaged over the last 15 years. So one of these goes inside the coach, and one of them goes to the generator. So we're just gonna disconnect them both. It's gonna be more than a half inch. So anyway, I'm gonna get this undone. Let's get this out of the way, then we'll start pulling the generator down. All right, so we're getting ready to uh, lower the generator down. I have an ATV jack with a pair of uh, two by sixes on top of it. See that little under here? So it's uh, 916 bolts. So I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drill new holes in this plate and slide this back and not really remove the generator. One thing I wanted to do was lengthen this cable. That's where the uh, wires go in that I disconnected inside. But looking at those wires, they're rated for 125 degrees Celsius dry. So they probably have a pretty good high wet rating. I wanted to use like a, a good extension cord type uh, material, but they're only rated for 60 degrees Celsius when they're wet. And obviously it's gonna get hotter than that inside of here. So I'm having second uh, guesses about extending this cable. So I think what we'll do is just uh, slide this back like I talked about. And uh, so I can slide it forward and backwards to drill new holes. I just gotta get the centers right. And this might actually be a bit easier than I had planned because I don't need a lot of space back here actually thinking about this again so I'm gonna to have to move the whole thing back because of that brace it'll be in the way all right so anyway thinking as I'm working I have to come up with a solution for that wire so it looks like uh, the other option for moving this back will be that I'll have to when I slide this back this hole obviously won't be right and these are welded on, these bolts. So I'll have to drop this down and drill a new hole somewhere in this area, by the looks of it. Then this one here, I'll just abandon that bolt. I'll have to drill a new hole somewhere near this cab mount. Rock up there. Make sure to get rocks in the, here and there from time to time. Not a lot of space back here, but I can slide this back on the frame. I'm not gonna move the frame it goes up into there, so it can't move. So it's got to drill new holes on both sides here. So I'll pop the generator down. There's this here. You can see on the fuel tank, there's a line coming off of it. That's called the auxiliary engine connection. That's part of the uh, code on the van for that fuel tank. This has some hokey little hose sticking out. So that's plenty long, that'll reach. There's a battery cable up above here somewhere that I need to disconnect. Then there's a, a control cable I'll need to disconnect as well, which is just a connector. All right, so there's just uh, four 916 bolts holding this uh, whole contraption up here. You can see the uh, control connector. I'm gonna take a look up here to see how this is hooked up. You see those cables going in there somewhere. See battery cable back there maybe. Sorry, bear with me, it's not easy to show. I think underneath that rubber cover is uh, where they join the two battery cables together. Because this can start all the time. It doesn't matter if you have your AC, DC isolated or not. 
So I think I'm going to try to drill it as is. This would be an opportune time to do the diff fluid because you could slide this back and take the differential cover off. There's this one that's had like the fluid pumped out of it once and that is it. It's got a uh, hundred thousand miles on it now so it's due again. So uh, I'm not really set up to do that right now. I might tackle it. I'll have to think about it. I took some measurements. There's about five inches of space originally between the uh, generator and the tank. I'm going to move it back three inches and hopefully that's enough. If not it's pretty easy to move this back if you've got a, a jack here and you're not trying to remove it completely from the unit. Disconnecting the electrical wasn't necessary. But like I said, I was thinking about using a, uh, a different cable, but after taking a good look at what they used, it's uh, not something that's readily available to me. So I'm gonna leave that alone. Hopefully you can hear me. I just realized I had my finger over the microphone. So anyway, I'm gonna try to drill some holes here so they're three inches back and uh, get this going again. All right, so I drilled a pilot hole using a 532nd drill. Then I did a 716th hole. And uh, you'll see that where I did the drilling, there's a step in the material. So I have some uh, thick washers I'm gonna use to uh, resolve that. So we'll take a look under the van and see what I've done. It seemed that three and a quarters back was sort of like the natural location for this hole. Like I said, there's a step here. So I have the half or the thick washers, which will uh, help with that. So there's not too much deflection. The uh, cab mounts are a problem. I need to move back like six inches if I want to land here. So I gotta take a look at that and think about it. See what the solution is. I could use some great big self tappers and go in backwards. I might put in some big self tappers and put a, a bolt there at uh, around six inches back. That might be the right solution. We'll see how it goes. Uh, so I'm gonna get this back into place and bolt it up with the uh, rear hardware because that uh, will make it a lot easier rather than trying to get six holes all lined up. If I just uh, bolt it back in position, the other holes will naturally be in the right position. All right, so one of my questions was whether or not I'd be able to service the air filter like this. So we're back uh, three and a quarter inches. The answer is yes, you can get the filter out. It's not easy, regardless of the position, the way it's held in. See if we can do it with one hand or not. Obviously you wanna take the time to make sure you got this right. You don't wanna have any dirt going into your generator's intake. But yeah, you can get this in. You can get the spring in as well. There's no worry about that. You have to wonder why Road Check moved it forward as far as they did. I don't know if it's for uh, accidents, perhaps. They wanted to have more space between the propane tank and the generator. Don't have the answer for that for you. Because there's actually some cutouts in this frame as if you could put a propane tank very close to it. We have lots of space now for servicing the differential. Sorry for flipping the camera like that. If you weren't going to put in a sway bar, you'd have tons of space. That's more than the depth of the uh, differential cover, so you can pull it back and down. No problem. So when I'm doing a sway bar, I will uh, probably service the differential then if I don't do it this weekend. So that's good. I'm gonna get the big self tappers and run them up in here. I'm kind of stuck on the uh, step where I put it back here. If I had gone a bit further I guess I'd be okay. So maybe you could try to do four inches back. It's up to you. And uh, so I'm going to put some more bolts in here. The hardware that came off of here, like I said, the bolts are welded in. 
then the uh, their nylock nuts so they're locking nuts so they don't fall out I didn't need to remove the uh, shield for the propane line sorry I can't really show it very well this guy here this fan has some secrets it's got a rivet there screw here bit of repairs here I've been aware of that so something's funny has happened to this van. I haven't really figured out what as of yet, but it doesn't seem to have affected it. So uh, we'll get this generator fully mounted up. The lines seem like they're long enough. I'm gonna go pop over there. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of tension on them, but I'll make sure that uh, that's good and we'll, I'll follow up with that in a minute. All right, so the uh, power cable, it's a little bit tight, but it's good. There is still lots of uh, slack on the inside of the vehicle, so it's not going to be putting any tension on the wiring terminals. That's the fuel line. It's fine. This is the uh, battery cable connector. I'll have to, to attach that to something. It's kind of floppy now. And there was the uh, control connector, which you can't see the connector, but it's up on top of there. It's kind of flopping around. So that's good. This is supported so it's not going to land on the differential. That's the differential breather tube right there. Just checking to see that the top isn't full of garbage. It seems like it's okay. So uh, it looks like it's all going to work out. Like I said, I just got to finish up the bolting. Maybe I'll bolt it back here. I'll figure it out eventually. I'll follow up with you. All right, so this is my solution for uh, remounting the generator. I didn't have any really great fasteners here. If you're going to do this job, I'd recommend you figure out what size uh, fastener that is. It might be 3 8 and get some matching fasteners rather than what I've done is I've got three different size fasteners all in the same spot, which I'm not exactly proud of, but it's going to do the job. I didn't put a self-tapper in here. I didn't want to interfere with the cab mount any more than it already is. When you drill through here, be very careful. The gas line is going through there. It comes down through here, transitions to a rubber hose, which they, uh, you can see it's that big thing that's covered up in the corrugated conduit. But it's, uh, it's right there, so don't drill into it. So uh, that concludes the video. I'm just gonna tidy up the other side Put the battery back on, reconnect the transfer switch, which you, if you're just putting in a sway bar, you wouldn't need to undo that wiring as it turns out. If you're going to drop the generator, then you would. You'd also have to look at uh, disconnecting this. There's a lot of caulking on the inside. Disconnecting the uh, nut on the inside would not be easy, but it's something you'd have to figure out how to do if you're going to completely remove this thing. I'm not sure how it connects in the back. Here, but I'm sure it's easier to do it inside the camper than on the outside here. So thank you for watching.